Today, I'm going to take a look at the NerdX Gamma from iX Tech. You can find their website in the description below. I'll be unboxing and going through the initial configuration to get this NerdX up and running. I've ordered from iX Tech multiple times. They ship really quick. It took about a week to reach me from the time of placing the order. All right, let's dig in and see what's inside the box. Wow. First impression, this design looks incredible. It's comprised of multiple pieces that fit together so well. The flat parts were printed on a special 3D printing plate that gives the surface this really cool like spectrum multicolor effect. And when placing my order, I noticed they had freebies on their website. You just have to cover the cost of shipping. So if you're already placing an order and you need some of these things, it really makes sense just to add them. These brackets I added were designed for the 52 pi low profile heatsink and fan um, so that you can overclock or add this to an existing bit axe model and get better cooling. Uh, they were originally designed by OC Axe. You can find the links for all of this in the description below. So this is the included 5 volt 6 amp power supply with a 90 degree barrel plug. I love the 90 degree barrel plug. It's so convenient. All right, it looks like that's all that's left in the box. The very first time I ordered from iX Tech, they included these really cool stickers, which you can see here from my previous order. They also included a business card with a 10% discount code for future use. That's pretty cool. Here's the actual NerdX Gamma. You can see a USB-C port for the display. This isn't something you need to worry about. I believe it's used for initial setup. A barrel plug connection and their heatsink with the included fan and 3D printed fan cover. This looks so cool, and that display is massive. One thing is for sure, the craftsmanship from iX Tech on their boards is impeccable. These things are so well built. And this right here, it simply drops right into place with the included stand. There's no screws, it just sits right over four pegs, and since it's slightly angled backwards, it won't fall out. And I almost forgot to mention another really cool feature of this case. The bottom is removable, and you can actually wall mount this if you'd rather do that instead. All right, so the first time you plug in your miner, after about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, you'll finally see this screen. It's super easy to set up. All you need to do is look for this Wi-Fi name on your network. It does need to be a 2.5 gigahertz range, which most routers will support as well as the 5 gigahertz, but it has to have that 2.5 gigahertz feature of your Wi-Fi router. Once connected, it's going to open a configuration page for the NerdX, and here we can actually begin setting this up. First off, we're going to set our Wi-Fi settings. Host name is the name that you want this device to be recognized as on your network. Wi-Fi SSID, this is the Wi-Fi name that you want to connect to, and in addition to that, the Wi-Fi password. So go ahead and enter those details, and then you would continue to setting up your pool information. You need to specify a primary and a fallback pool. Um, so you'd have your host, port, username, and stratum password. You can get all of that from the pool you're connecting to. And by default, this comes at 515 for the frequency and 1150 for the core voltage. You actually want to go ahead and set this up to 525, and these are the settings you'll need to hit that 1.2 giga hash a second range. And then we have the fan controller you can leave as is, and then we have some options down here if you want to flip the orientation of your display, or if you want the screen to automatically turn off after it's been inactive for a while. And you can always go ahead and check to see if you have the latest version, and if a new version is available, download both the binary files, and you would browse and flash them in each of these locations, making sure to select the correct binary file for each. So after you finish with all of your settings, go ahead and hit save, and then restart. After it restarts, it'll take about a minute or so to fully connect to your pool, and you should start to see some of that information begin to populate in your dashboard. Leave it for about an hour or so and come back, and then you'll start to see your hash rate stabilize and more of a trend on your graph to see that you're hitting right around that 1.2 giga hash second range. And then you can see we have some different information down below with our power, our heat, and our performance. And I'll tell you right now, the power that this is showing is incorrect. I actually measured it at the wall, and this is the actual usage that this device is pulling, which is about 18 to 20 watts. I'm not sure why the dashboard is wrong. I'm guessing this will get fixed in a future update to the NerdX uh, OS. Here it is in all of its glory. 
the bottom button navigates between four screens, the overall dashboard, settings relative to the miner, the current price ticker for Bitcoin, and then global stats about the difficulty in halving. Thanks so much. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe down below, visit the links included in the description, and follow us on X.